we have a first here on Oklahoma Garden. I'm excited to bring to you a historical horticulture figure, John Bartram, joining us today on Oklahoma Gardening. Welcome to Oklahoma. I know, it's just a magnificent state to be a part of. Yes, you've done, you're a famous plant explorer. Can you tell us a little bit about the explorations you've done and did it ever bring you to this part of the world? No, but my son came very close in a subsequent year when he was south, going through Texas and, and Louisiana and the southern states. But for me, it's, it's the trade with all of the native population. You know, I wouldn't be half the botanist that I am were it not for all of the plants that the natives introduced me to. You know, we were both recognized as being interested in the native medicinal herbs. That's mm -hmm. how it all started. Europe uh, craved cures for the common uh, syphilis or, or, or a cold. Uh -huh. and, and they sent out uh, great exploration parties looking for ginseng because China was charging them weight in silver for it. Wow. So if we could find it here, it would be cheaper for them, especially England, because it ruled the waves. And North America to England was a short trip versus any of the longer routes to the Orient. And you started collecting these plants and then sending them to England? Yes. In Bartram's boxes, is that what they became known as? Bartram's boxes, yes. For five guineas, you too could have a guarantee <laughs> of 100 different species with as many as a thousand plants in a box. And the average one was 18 inches by 12 by 15. And the size was so perfect that it would fit exactly under the pillow of the captain's cabin's bed, because that's the driest cubic inches on any North Atlantic merchantman. So with all of your Bartram's boxes that you were sending over to yes. England, you kind of acquired a special status with the king. Can you tell us about that? <clears throat> well, not only with the king, but with, with the top <clears throat> dukes, barons, earls, lords, and ladies, too. It was an aristocratic trade in the botany of empire. And with the, the current fashion of doing a, an English country-style landscape, where their, their great gorgeous green lawns with the sheep's meadows out in front of those majestic palaces <laughs> with the, the great lakes that would reflect the house to make it look twice as large as it actually was. We're surrounded by those ornamental decorative cops of trees. <laughs> That's where I came in. Okay. We were providing them with a, a, a session and a, and a selection of species of trees, the like of which they had never seen in nature before. So, Capability Brown, the great landscape designer, and Alexander Pope were describing landscapes defining the trade of the North Atlantic horticulture from Bartram's Garden. And, and there was one plant you put in every box. What was yes. that plant? It was the Lady's Slipper Orchid. Why that plant? Well, that plant was a, was a challenge. You know how gardeners always like to have the latest and the greatest and the best and the newest. And if I could put a root of that plant into every box, it was a challenge to English gardeners to see if they could bring it to flower. And it took them years. They had to develop a whole industry of glass houses, heated interior spaces, framed in iron and, and sided with sheets, huge, enormous sheets of, of paneled glass. Franklin got a royalty on his stoves. I got nothing, <laughs> nothing. But ultimately, yes, they, they, were, they, they cultured the Lady Slipper Orchid and the Cypripedium went into the books as, as a historic first for you, Peter Collins and his friends. You mentioned Benjamin Franklin. You, yes. ha you had him as a friend and a few other of our founding fathers. Can you tell us what it was like to live with them? Benjamin Franklin was difficult to live with. <laughs> That's why he spent most of his life overseas. And, and the same way with Adams, an obstinate, ornery little man. And, and yet you, you had the rest of the, them, all of them, agriculturists, deeply embedded in the soil and, and the, the wealth and diversity of the biology that they were presented in this great North American garden that we had, this east of Eden. I, I came into my trade through introduction by James Logan, who was the secretary 
to Pennsylvania's uh, great Quaker colony. He came in, in the first migration of Quakers with William Penn and took on all of the weight of, of his royalty in this colony. And he had a, a great library that allowed me to read and study and notice and, and understand that there was a great art involved too through botanical illustration. So you were a self-taught man. Had to be. Well, and there was you were no originally education. a farmer. You started out being a farmer. Where is home? My home is on the banks of the Schuylkill River mm -hmm. next to Philadelphia as, as a Quaker farmer, third generation, born in 1699. You look good for your age. I know, it has all to do with the tannins <laughs> out, of, out of the trees that you get. It, 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 it's good to cure leather that way. Now your home has turned into the first botanical garden and, 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 and wholesale in, retail in nursery. In Oklahoma, and wholesale retail nursery. Yes. In fact, yes. nowadays we get a lot of plant catalogs and we don't think anything other ah. than we're excited to get them as yes. gardeners, but you really started that. Well, there was a list. Benjamin Franklin said, here, I have a secret. If you put things on paper and you print them and you distribute them for general consumption, people will fight a, fight a path to your door. So he, he suggested that I print a catalog of my hundred best-selling plants. Newest introductions, <laughs> latest to the trade, all of the excitement of spring. And if you were a member, of, are you a member of the Aristocratic uh, Society of Britain? No, I'm are not, you, sorry. Are you, are you a, a designated heir or a sign no. of any lord or lady? No. In England? Well, then you wouldn't no. have gotten one, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. We could make you a special <laughs> list. I would appreciate but that. But they were sent to all of the great estate houses in England. So you marketed direct marketing. <laughs> it, was, it was a very direct marketing campaign. Uh, Philip Miller, who was director of the Physic Garden at Kew, through all of the Quaker connections of Dr. James Fothergill and Peter Collinson, and of course the Secretary General of Pennsylvania, James Logan. It was an open um, Rolodeck of, of names and addresses. And then ultimately, it, it was a, a much sought after uh, assignment to get a Bartram's box. If, if you happen to have employed Capability Brown as a landscape designer, Capability was on it. He said, we've got to see what's the new introduction this year from a Bartram's box. We've got to get a copy of that list. Do you think there's something you can take back from Oklahoma, England like, like here? Yes. What's that? Uh, these, these very deep Circus reniformis, you know, we don't, we, don't, we don't have the color or the sense or the floriferousness of that tree. That is so lovely. And this, this Mexican plum. Yes. Oh, oh, <laughs> Prunus Mexicana. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just, they, they glow. In the evening, you can pass them and you can see them. They, they are outlined against these, these endless skies of yours. It's just magic. Well, we're so happy to have you here in Oklahoma. I'm, I'm and happy to be here. It's been a pleasure meeting you and talking to you. And, and we hope to hear more about your plant explorations in the future. I look forward to giving them and to keeping the travels going. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussions.